Well, welcome to another edition of Tiny Talks. Uh, thanks for joining us. We're going to have an, an amazing, great uh, conversation today. For those of you all who don't know me, I'm Chris House, uh, Creative Arts Director at the City Life Church. I do a whole bunch of things uh, involving social action and all that kind of stuff. Of course, you probably already know that. Got some friends with me here today. Just going to have a good little conversation around a few topics. So uh, why don't you introduce yourself, and then we'll, we'll get into it. Yeah, um, James. Uh, I am an associate pastor at Freedom Life Church, um, family ministries pastor, but also the dean of our newly uh, instated Freedom School of Ministry. Oh, yeah. um, so I got, some, got, my, got my shirt on here. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm originally from Philadelphia, um, and we live in Newport News now. So just kind of hanging out, excited. Honestly, I feel a little underprepared, under uh, overwhelmed. You guys are, I'm, these are heavy hitters. And so I'm just like enjoying the conversation. Man, we glad to have you, dude. Come on, let's What's go. Up? I am <clears throat> just a nobody <laughs> trying to <laughs> tell everybody <laughs> about somebody who could change. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Louis Gibbs, the uh, lead pastor, lead planter of Radical City Church in Portsmouth um, from South Norfolk. Uh, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. Uh, <laughs> I am a, a pastor, an activist, an entrepreneur, a husband of one wife, and I'm um, father of four children and no more. Four so children, no more. <laughs> and we done. God gave me a son and put the stamp on it. That was it. Uh, and that was it. That was a mic drop. That was, was the mic drop. Oh. So, yeah, so that's I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for considering me. Oh, for sure. And I'm ready to get it in. Yeah, so we're going to have a little, little conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, I mean, if you don't know what's been happening in our world and in our country, you've been under a few rocks. Can't mm-hmm. even say one rock. You've just one been rock. been <laughs> under <laughs> under a mountain. Uh, so, I mean, you've been in a know bunker. we're living in a society of, you know, social unrest, as yeah. people would call it. I mean, we know we got an election coming up in less than, what, 60 days on, 90 days, one yeah. of It's around coming. The it's around the corner. Around the corner. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're having experience, still experiencing things like police brutality, uh, you know, police uh, uh, killings uh, of citizens, um, have a bunch of social m- movements emerging. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Just we're going to share some experiences, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, see where we can go, what information we can lend, uh, just, just to help people navigate through this space. Um, so we're going to have good, candid conversation and we're going to... You know, see where we go. So let's talk about a few, yeah. few things. Yeah. So we know here recently uh, we just experienced another police-involved shooting um, in uh, Wisconsin um, amidst all the others that we've had. So talking about police brutality, we'll kind of use that umbrella of police brutality. What are, what do we think some of the concerns are from the citizens of our communities w- regarding police brutality or interaction with police. I'm trying to give you an umbrella statement, we'll kind of go in a little deeper. But what are some of the some of the concerns that our community has with law enforcement? I don't know who want to take it. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, let's start with trust. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, trust being the basis for any relationship. Yeah. Right. From marriages to girlfriends to boyfriends to friends right. to associates. Like if I don't trust you. I'm not going to readily give you me Mm -hmm. um, or access to me. And so we have this broken system with any broken system of police uh, community interaction, Mm -hmm. right? So I don't want to call it, I don't even want to deal with the police because I don't trust that you have my best, my best interest at heart. heart. So I think that the the largest issue that we have within our community is the lack of trust. But see, I don't subscribe to the the statement that uh, trust is earned. Mm-hmm. I think that mistrust is earned, mm-hmm. and I think policing in this country has earned our mistrust. Mm-hmm. Right uh, as we continue to see this lack of care in our community, um, and our imitating life. Right, you you see one of my favorite shows is Chicago P- PD. Mine right? too. Right. So Mine too. 
Um, and the other one is Law and Order SVU. Yeah, of course. Uh, those two they are my jobs. I think that I, I think that Dick Wolf is an amazing, <laughs> an amazing guy, right? Uh, but one of the things that I find uh, disheartening is the truth that we see come off of these TV screens. Okay. One of those things being where they will allow drug dealers to continue to deal drugs in their community in order for them to get what they want out of it, right? right. So here it is: you want to kill us, you want to arrest us, except for when letting us do dirt. Sure. Benefits you, That's right. right? And so yeah. you're just as crooked, mm -hmm. right, in our communities as you are outside of our mm -hmm. community. So if you're doing that, like, yo, how do you teach? How 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 do, how do I tell my homeboy don't cheat on his wife when I'm cheating on my wife? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Okay. And so we have this mistrust, and then we turn around and you shooting us in our back, mm -hmm. or you're holding your neck, your your foot on our neck, right? Right. Or you're arresting us for no reason on the side of the road for uh, a signal light out. Mm -hmm. And we die in a prison cell. Mm -hmm. Right. Or I'm playing with a BB gun in a Walmart or on in a park and you pull up on the curb and you sure. shoot me. Like these are the people who are supposed to come and find out what's going on. Uh, Deescalate the situation and then, and then figure out how to protect and serve the community. But you're not doing that. I think it also feels it feels hopeless. You know, it, there's a there's a hopelessness that goes along with it because, as you said, Louis, there's a there's a system um, that we're taught to abide by. There's okay. a system mm -hmm. that's saying, hey, if you do this, here's the outcome. Mm -hmm. Right? If I if I press this button, here's what you'll get in return. But the interesting thing is that that all works for everyone except for us okay. right. because I can press this button and now when I press the button, it's not working. When right. I press the button, right. I get pulled over. You, you're you used to saying, well, if I smile and give them a good look, yes, right. officer, blah, 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 then of course I'm going to be able to be spared and get justice. The challenge is we're seeing all over the news, and this has been a perfect storm, we're seeing everywhere that we've been pressing that button and we've not been getting the same results that everybody else has been getting. So it feels hopeless. It's almost like, well, let's let's get rid of the button or let's figure out another way to do this. Okay. So it's interesting that you brought that last point about what we're seeing on the news, seeing in the media. All right. What do you say to, to the people who will rebut the statements or on the other side or who will... <laughs> say that um, all of this is a conspiracy theory. It's not as bad as we're making it, and the media yeah. is choosing to control the narrative by only showing certain altercations, but not showing others, and that's creating this theory or this narrative that the people that the police are against people or people that that is helping to aid in the narrative of it, there being so much mistrust and disparities in numbers on how different demographics are treated than others. I know sure. I said a lot of that, but yeah. my point is there are a lot of people who say the media is trying to control this narrative. So so the first thing I would do is affirm mm -hmm. the fact that I believe that the media is is culpable Absolutely. In, in what's okay. happening. Absolutely. Um, so to that, yes, you're right. The media is controlling it. The truth of the matter is that the me the media is still showing what's happening, right. right? For you to use the excuse that the media is somehow these conspiracy theorists who is causing the tension, but ignoring the reality of dead bodies on the ground, so what they're showing, right? Like, like, what are you doing? You're trying to mm -hmm. use the media as a scapegoat for you not caring? Mm -hmm. The reality is you still don't care. Mm -hmm. like, I don't want to hear I got black friends. That's basically the equivalent, mm -hmm. right? Like, yo, uh, well, the media is the one who's showing up. They're, they're showing the truth. The crack needles you see on the ground are real. I mean, the heroin needles you see on the ground are real. The crack valves broken are real. The the disparities that we see in our in our communities are real. The neck, the knee on the neck of George Floyd is real. I'm all, uh, 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 Asbury, is that his name? Mm -hmm. Arbery. 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 That's real. Like, Sandra Bland is real. Like, Trayvon Martin is real. Oscar Grant is real. Sean Bell is real. Mm -hmm. Like, we can go down the list right. of names exactly. as real as it's Jesus story. Christ is. Right. right? This is real. Right. So don't, like... The spin on the spin on the narrative that the that the media is putting does not uh, dismiss the reality of this disproportionate policing of black people 
in this country. Yeah, it, it doesn't change. It's been a magnifying glass. I mean, yeah, literally, it's, it's literally just uh, being able to take an, uh, an issue that's been existing for years. Mm-hmm. And now, we, again, we're in a perfect storm now. All of these videos, most of these we've seen lately, have been on cell phones. Right. So it's like that, the media can control everything they want to, right. but, but how you get into my cell phone? You can't control like, my life. This is somebody <laughs> actually taking video and saying, you know, we for the first time are in a social media generation where this was happening years ago. Mm-hmm. We just didn't have the means or the resources to see it. Right. Now everybody's like, we've got no choice but to actually believe this. Right. So, like what, you're caught on camera. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you're caught on camera, Pretty right? Much. I mean, the the, we, the 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 power is in the hands of the people. I mean, mm-hmm. I, now they're getting get to the point where they're blocking people's lives when they go live wow. at, at police incidents and situations. Right. Somehow the cell tower goes out. Right, I'm telling you, that's what's gonna be next. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, that's what nobody. Mm-hmm. Said. We were at a uh, a rally one time, and we were trying to go live. Everybody's cell phone wasn't working. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how in the world right. is a cell phone not working? Right, right. And we on different networks, right? right. <laughs> right. And nobody's stuff is working. Right. So what's going on? So yeah, I mean, it's it's being exposed, and I like what you said. The media is only playing the videos from the community who's watching this stuff happen. Yeah, that's interesting. Do do we? F- I know the answer to this, but just trying to get to some factual information. Do we feel that there is a over policing of people of color versus people of non color? Is 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 there is there a legitimately over policing, um, or is it that law enforcement is just doing its job and that people of color are? I don't want to say inherently criminal, but are criminals and they just do their job, or is there do or is there a sense of over policing that can contribute to the relationship between the community and law enforcement? I think it's. I mean, I, I you know, I think I think it's I'm with most out. of this <laughs> stuff, it feels like a both end. Okay. You know, with, with most, I think that to, when it comes to this argument, when it comes to any of the arguments, it's really easy to get on one side or the other. Right. But there is this tension that we have to actually address. That it, it, it very well may be some over policing, and mm-hmm. I and I believe that there is right. some over policing. But there is also because I I want to speak from a, another perspective because I have some cops that are really, I mean, really good dudes, yep. really good good guys Likewise. and girls. Likewise. And so there is this also this fear piece that plays okay. a part where it's like you are in a, a situation where this is what you're used to experiencing or this is what you're seeing, you know, kind of played out in the media. Or, and, and so you, you almost have a, a second thought or you, you're almost kind of going to these uh, routine stops with uh, just a little bit of fear right. as a cop. But then there's also the, <laughs> the black kid who's I'm a I'm a bigger black guy. We're all kind of right. bigger right. black guys. Yeah. So if I'm getting pulled over, my wife, it works for her. She can kind of smile and get out of a ticket and things like that. But my mind is not thinking about getting out the ticket. My mind is like, what is this going to turn into? Right. Are they going to overdo it? Like, it's it's kind of ridiculous when I see guys that look just like me mm-hmm. and there are three cop cars for right. one, you know, one pedestrian stop. It's right. So I don't know, man. I, it, it's it's really difficult for me because it, it feels like there is a both and. Both and. Yeah. yeah. What you got? So I try to be very balanced. Oh, right, right. Right. There yeah. is a time where I was super, super, I was so pro-black it was sin. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would have said to you, absolutely. Right. Right. Um, right. There's an over police in. I, I would like to say that there is a, let's go back to Birth of a Nation. Okay. Right? Yep. And I ain't talking about the net, the net term. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. Right? The original. Yeah. The original Birth of a Nation. The one they showed in the White House. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is, is, was, was designed to create this imagery of the black man. Yep. Mm-hmm. That imagery has been has served to be an indelible footprint in the psycho, I mean psyche of <laughs> white America, some yeah. white Americans. Yeah. Um, and I think to be honest with you, the policing or the over policing that we see is because of that image. Yeah. Right? Um uh, that image is played out in our minds. Let's look back to what we found out that was said uh, behind the scenes in the in the Central Park Five. Yeah. Here it is. You've painted another picture of black and Hispanic brothers right. as these murdering, raping right. guys, right? Super like, predators. That's what they super call predators, right? right? Like this, 
this imagery that says that absolutely they did this. Right. They have to be the ones that did this because right. people that look like us can't do this, mm -hmm. right? So we see ultimately white police officers talking calmly to a white man with a knife in his hand. Right. <laughs> right. Right. We see them calmly talking to a white man with a rifle in his hand. Mm -hmm. Right. Yo, we would be dead already. It would be no question. No There'd question. be no conversation. Put the gun. Pop. 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 That's you why we've never seen to, the conversation. You didn't yeah. get to. You didn't even get to down. Mm -hmm. So, is there an over policing? Yes, that over policing though I believe is is fueled by fear. Okay. Um, it's fueled by uh, uh, a lack of wanting to know your community. Mm -hmm. It's fueled by mm -hmm. people not living in their communities. Right. I, you know, I don't think you should be a police officer in a city that you don't live in. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Right? You don't have any. It's like you don't have any skin in the game. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Right? It doesn't. It doesn't matter to you right. what this city does. Right. Or don't. It yeah. can go to hell in a handbasket right. for all you can. <laughs> right. Right? right. So the yeah. over policing comes because there's a there's a there's a there's a, a root of fear, there's a lack of empathy or care for the community that you're policing, and then there's a lack of care for my black skin. Right, we are and have been since the beginning of time the throwawayables. Mm -hmm. It yeah. doesn't matter. It's just another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I got you. Man, I had to catch myself. <laughs> right, like it's another <laughs> n-word off yeah. the street, right? Yeah. Like it's yeah. you know, they, he gone, right? right. So that's just yeah. so. All right, mm. so so I ain't, I ain't want him to have to go boop. Right, right, right. 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 <laughs> so I'm a I'm a, I'm like you. I'm trying to be very balanced in my approach and in my stances that I'm not so heavy on one side that I. You know, forget the other. So, just yeah. doing a little research. So, I'm looking on, looked at the Department of Justice uh, website, and this is a survey that was taken in 2015. And the report, um, it was the report was about police uh, police stops being marred by racial uh, discrimination. Mm -hmm. um, and so, the report revealed that black residents were more likely to be stopped by police than white or Hispanics both in traffic stops and street stops. Mm. Black Hispanics, uh, black Hispanic residents, rather, were more likely to have multiple contacts with police with white residents, especially in the context of traffic and street stops. More than one in six black residents who were pulled over in a traffic stop or on the street had similar interactions with police multiple times mm. over the course of the year. When police initiated an interaction, they were twice likely to be threatened by use of lethal force against black or Hispanic than white residents. Mm. All right. So uh, it, further it goes, I, 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 I'll go on to this. Uh, they were marked by r racial differences in perceptions of police behavior uh, and legitimacy of the police stops. Okay. Um, white residents were more likely than black, Hispanic, or residents or other races to initiate the contact with police, according to this study. Uh, for for example, to report on a, a crime, a non-crime emergency, or to seek help from another reason, 46% 40, of white residents who had contact with police initiated the contact, the contact compared to 37% of blacks. So this is, so you can get from that what that, what that report is saying. So do we, do we feel that this is, because the, the kickback that we'll get from that uh, even the instance that you uh, brought up, that these are isolated incidents and that we say that we have good police officers, we say there are bad and corrupt police officers, and every situation is different. Every situation, And we just, if we were to put ourselves in the mind of being a police officer, every interaction is different. You yep. don't know walking in yep. what it's going to be. Yep. So is it that these instances that we're seeing, is it every incident is isolated or is it a systematic thing that is highlighted by the incidents that we see. Without doubt, it's systematic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you that the 46% of the white initiated uh, calls were to about black folk. Okay. Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I mean, uh, what was it about? It's about a robbery. And I guarantee if it was about a robbery, you're going to describe a black man that didn't exist. If okay. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I think it's all systemic. Again, I think there's an imagery that exists in... America in the West of black people. Now, I won't say it doesn't exist in other countries. I'm right. sure it does. Because I know people in Europe who talk about some of the same, some, like some similar races, mm -hmm. uh, uh, race issues right. over, over there. However, in this particular country, I mean, you got to talk about, we talk about the black people who weren't here, mm -hmm. right? We came here as slaves. Right. We were released 
as less than nothing. Mm-hmm. We were thought of as less than nothing. And I'm going to be real with you. I think there's a segment of white America who's not happy that we're, we are something. Right. Right? And the, 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 the fact that these things keep happening is proof that it's systemic. Mm-hmm. Right? It's proof that it's systemic. Here's what I realized the other day. It was to take some stress off of me. Racism isn't going anywhere. Okay. Right? Racism is sin. Mm-hmm. Right? And until Jesus comes back, sin will be here. Okay. Okay? So there is absolutely nothing that we're going to be able to do to eradicate racism. Yeah. At <laughs> best, we can begin to put practice in place, practices in place to uh, uh, to begin to move some of, some racist practices out of the way. Right. right? Let's use trespassing, for example. Mm-hmm. Trespassing is a law that is very ambiguous. Okay. Right? You don't really have to have a reason for violating somebody for trespassing. Okay. But if you go back, you'll see that people that that police use trespassing laws to create loitering experiences that would uh, arrest black people in line to vote. Right. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. So now I'm moving you, I arrest you for the length of the day, because you only mm-hmm. get to vote one day, and now right. that's one one less vote. Less vote right. right. So there are laws that are actually put in place sure. that that disproportionately affect black Americans. Right. Mm-hmm. We used to ride around in the 80s with dice in the window. Right. That's a pullovable offense. Mm-hmm. Right? And so now you got white you got white cops pulling over black people saying, oh, you got your tassel from your graduation right. hanging in your window mm-hmm. in hopes of finding, finding you doing something. dirt. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? right? It's it's crazy the way this is done mm-hmm. and the way people are treated. I have been I, I was I don't care. I was Southern Baptist mm-hmm. and I was searched as a Southern Baptist pastor at a Southern Baptist conference. Mm-hmm. I walk in the building, they stop me and search my bag. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what's crazy. The white people who would say that they loved me walked past me and watched them search me. Mm-hmm. So this is my issue. Uh-huh. Like, so let, let, let me... Because <laughs> now you, you, you press the button. Uh-huh. So my, my... Wait a minute. My, I also had black for, people <laughs> right. walk no, past so me, let, let me, let me and let them search me. That's it. Them. So here, yeah. here's my issue is... <laughs> When we look at things like, for example, if we were to just kind of think through the last couple of uh, things we've seen on the media, the yeah. last couple of, you know, uh, the uh, uh, unlawful, unjust shootings that we saw on the cell phone, what bothers me more than the police brutality the from us is, is the apathy. It's the apathy. Yeah. It's oh, the man. bystanders. It's the peop- It's the person taking the video. It, right. I mean, it, it really burns me up because I'm sitting there like, if we would have had, I'm thinking of George Floyd, if we had those officers that would have actually decided, yo, this isn't right. This is right. You shouldn't be doing this. If we would have had the person on the other side that was actually taking the video. Right. This isn't right. Now I'm actually going to step here. Let's stop. Right. Yeah. I just, it's just a problem with me that I, I get it. I'm, I'm absolutely saying that there's some areas where we need to address the police, but I'm also saying there's some areas that we need to address us right. because there's some stuff that you're right. We walk through these endeavors where I, I remember being in Atlanta. I was with a, a group of uh, some, some people I was working with, and a cop literally stopped. They didn't stop for anybody else. I forgot my hat that day. It was cold outside that night. I usually wear a hat. And I had a hood on. Right. But I'm standing with these white women. The oh, cop kind of comes over to me. These are my coworkers. The cop right. comes over to me and kind of, everybody okay? Right. What do you mean? We've been sitting here the whole time. Right. And what bothered me, and I shared it with them, what bothered me was that nobody actually said it. Right. Black, white, whatever. Right. It was just... I think that's my issue, man, and I don't want to get too too <laughs> done on that. But it's the apathy. Right. It's the it's the sense that I'm seeing someone else, someone else in need. I'm mm-hmm. seeing someone else hurting, and my my best resolve, right. the way I'm feeling like I'm gonna solve it, is to actually put it on Instagram or right. put it on Facebook. This person's dying. Right. Oh, so you know, let's keep it one hundred, right quick. All right. Are you willing to die for this? Is the question right. you got? That's the question, right? right? Right, because I've I've had this conversation and argument with with some friends of mine and thinking about my wife and my kids at the same right. time. Yeah, it's real. I'm standing man. there yeah. looking at this man get choked out, and me intervening means that I could be shot. Yep, right. I would save George Floyd's life, but you know what people would say? Hmm. He should have never hmm. attacked the police. That's right. right. Now, what do we do with that? Right. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Like, 
Hmm. You are right. Like, someone should have... Like, where does the... What greater love mm -hmm. than a man lay down his life for a friend come right. in? Right. And then where does stupidity... Mm. Right. Right, like, which one is which? Right. But, but that's because, like you said, we don't trust the system. We don't trust... That the they system, are going to shoot this right, big black man. Right, right. I know. Flat out. <laughs> because of what we, right. because we have the receipts and because of what we've seen happen, we don't have the trust right. that if we do that, we're going to be given the benefit of the doubt. That's right. right. It's going to be, we thought that he was coming to attack us. We, you know, felt threatened. We thought he was going to. Well, how did you really so know we, he couldn't breathe? Right. right. And so that's why, again, it goes back to, it's a system yeah. that has yeah, system. not only the the system not only has physically oppressed us, but it's mentally it's created. Mentally. That's what this, really is. This is yeah. what it is. So it's working the way that it was designed to work. Mm -hmm. And that plays yeah. into the complicity. Um, I mention this all the time. This book called Color of Compromise, written mm -hmm. by Jamar Tisby, talking about the church's complicity with racism. Mm -hmm. The reason why racism, I feel, is still existing and so prevalent is because the church has been complicit with it. Like you're talking about Absolutely. going to a church conference Absolutely. with white people and they let this stuff happen and nobody speaks up and, and says it. And the black people, they don't do anything with Listen, it either. And then when I mentioned it, yeah. Right. Now, now, now you're no, open No, no. One of the white dudes actually said to me, all the white guys, and he said, I mean, but look at you. You're a big black guy. Like, right. Like, it yeah, was the, the justification. Right. right. I want you to know, because this was when I was I could have been in sin right, 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 right. It was the Holy Ghost. It was like I was having an outer body experience. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Lord wouldn't let my mouth move, right. man. I'm he shut it up. Your mouth. He shut me up. <laughs> he like, shut it up. Like he shut me up and made me be still. I was sitting like I cannot believe that is because here's the deal. What I do understand mm. is we won't have reconciliation. If we do, if somebody does not try to barter reconciliation, mm, okay. so there has to be black people in these white spaces to try to create or begin to have the conversation to create this reconciliatory efforts right. towards us all walking hand in hand. Yeah, I agree. The issue is mm -hmm. getting over here and then seeing people who say reconciliation, but really don't mean it with their hearts. Right. Right? I, I'm in protest all the time. I'm going to tell you one of the most beautiful things that to see is white people walking hand in hand with us who are really like, I'm so sorry for what's happening. Right. And you're not just saying it from social media. Right. Mm -hmm. You're out media. here in the streets with us. Media. Right? Like, I mean, that is, is, is beautiful. But here is the other piece that needs to happen. In order for us to really uh, make these systems of change happen, we've also got to unify within our community. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like on, that's come gotta on. come on. That's, that's gotta on. happen mm -hmm. because here's the truth: if it was six black people that were watching George Floyd be choked out, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to shoot all six of us. Mm -hmm. Okay. But don't make me the martyr. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't make me be the one right. to do it. Like right. we have to unify to say we're gonna fight against injustice. That's right. Okay. Outside of just march, this is not a march. This is a movement. Yeah, right. And I think that what's beautiful, honestly, what we're seeing is a is 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 an out of the abundance heart, uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is speaking. Right, right. The America, the doors are off the hinges. Okay, well, right. <laughs> like we have, yeah. it's a wrap. Yeah. Right, and and at this point, we need to unify to make this wrap produce something. Mm. Right. Mm. Right, yeah. produce police reform. I don't think you should defund the police. Nope. I agree. I mean, because I'm gonna call the police when somebody breaks in my house. Right? Right? Yeah. Right? So I mean, that's the fact. That's I don't think you need to defund for. the police. I think you need to fire bad police. Right. Yeah. Period. I think that you need to put mental health checks in. <laughs> if a person has left the military and he has PTSD, he's probably not gonna be the best police officer. Right. right? Like, and I'm not saying that that's a. I'm not saying that to you know. Right. Right. He needs help. He right. needs to be supported by the government exactly. because he fought and they gave him this PTSD. Right. But he should not be policing our streets. Right. What happens when a trigger happens and he's in our community? Right. right? Like what? There should be regular mental health checks That's right. in the police department. Right. Right. right? There should be more than just suspensions when they act out. You should pay attention to what's going on. In our city, we went and asked them to add questions to the lie detector test. Ask them, have you ever called a person... Niggers, spick, blah, right. blah, 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 blah. Right. 
right? So are, and then the police chief asked us, so are you saying that if they did, they should not be? I said, I'm saying if they did, there should be further investigation oh, like yep. into yep. that. You should stop yep. and evaluate what yep. that means. What that is, right? Yep. Right. Like, so, are they still there? Yes. Yes. So it, that's amazing. That's, a good point. That, that's amazing. That's where I was going with the whole defund police mm-hmm. thing. Um, what do we? What does that? What does that mean? Well, hold on. So they, I'm going to defund the police. That that's where we gonna end up. But let's just give you kickback on your question. Well, kind of supporting communities got to come together. Yeah. What do you say to the person who says, "Yeah, y'all doing all this marching in the street over the police killing y'all." But when Ray Ray shoot Boo Boo in a gang, ain't nobody saying nothing. Yeah. But yet y'all want to make all this protest about the white cops that's killing y'all. But y'all kill yourself. So why should we listen to you? Mm. Well, well, one, mm. you're ignorant. <laughs> um, and you're ignorant because the news media isn't covering our vigils and our conversations right. okay. about, right. black, about things that are happening in our community. Yeah. You don't really care about what's going on in our community. You only care about the fanfare things, yeah. the things that are, are good media hype. Right. You don't care that we were we were out there. You don't care that we're walking through uh, London Oaks or other communities and having conversations with people. You don't care that we're breaking up dice games in the middle right. of the hallways. You don't care anything about that, mm-hmm. right? But you want to use that. Here's the thing. Where are you? Right. How about that? How about you come with me? Right, right, right. 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 You're not gonna do that either. Right. So stop. Don't police. Don't police my community for me. Right. But right. this is a listen. I can talk about my mama. Right. Mm-hmm. You don't can't you talk, talk about my mama. Right. Because right. right. you know, So so right. what what right. we right. are saying is point. that there are anti-violent absolutely uh, organizations Whole movements in, in, yeah. in communities of yeah. color that are active. They should um, be. Yep. Especially in places that what what brought to my mind is. It's Chicago. Everyone, everyone wants to bring up Chicago being this place, but I know I have family that live in Chicago who are actively a part of the NAACP, who are a part of anti-violent community yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, organizations. Yeah. That that that's what they give their life that's to. Their life so to. just like you saying, it's not that it's not being done. Right. It's that that's not what's being highlighted. But then you right. also that's have right. white allies who okay. are also what's his name, Father. Uh, Oh, from the uh, from Chicago, like yo, he's respected in the community. Right. Like he's in, he's not in the suburbs. Like he's right. in the hoods in Chicago, right? right? right. Anytime Louis Farrakhan invites you to his Savior's Day speech, right, right. and then shouts you out, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you must be good white white folk. Yeah. <laughs> right? like, well, and I'm not, I'm not suburb. I'm just saying, no. like this is, yeah, you don't just complain. <laughs> put Aren't your, you put your, your yeah, like yo, put your feet where your mouth is, right. Right. Don't tell me about my community. You'll never come out there. Right. And I ain't talking about with your $10 towards a book bag. Right, exactly. Yep. I think there's, it's, there's I think a, it's a hard issue, man. Like, And, and it's, it's it's hard because I, as I was thinking about this on the ride over here, um, there's a book that I was reading recently. It's called uh, Decisive by Chip and Dan Heath. And they, they mm-hmm. talk about this issue of making, making decisions. And in the decisions, there are the uh, preventative decisions that we make, and there are the decisions that promote things. And so preventative decisions usually are us avoiding bad Bad things, mm-hmm. okay. but the promotional decisions are when we actually are pursuing good things. What I found is so interesting about some of this 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 topic and this argument is that many of us are leaning toward the side of just avoiding bad things. Okay. And so I'll post a post that says mm-hmm. Black Lives Matter or do this or defund the police. I'm jumping on that bad bandwagon because I'm avoiding bad things. There's you know rumors of people if they don't have a Black Lives Matter thing in their window or on their lawn that somebody will vandalize their home. Okay. And so what they're doing is they're avoiding bad things. But the other option is to actually pursue good. Right. Like pursue good and pursuing good looks like actually going right. towards community. Yeah. It actually looks like going towards unity. But I think that even the better aspect, and, and this is why I kind of lean on this, is that as the church, the kingdom of God, what we should be doing is actually finding both and. Right. It's mm-hmm. finding the thing of saying, okay, we do want to avoid the harm. We do mm-hmm. want to avoid people getting killed in the streets. Mm-hmm. We do want to avoid uh, the, the idea of police officers with uh, mental health issues actually policing right. the streets. But we also want to pursue the good of saying, let's make sure that our police officers are educated. Let's make sure that they know what the community is dealing with. Let's right. make sure that they have a presence in the community. And let's make sure that the community, the people that's running their mouth, are mm-hmm. actually doing mm-hmm. something about it. So it's a it's a really, it's this thing is so tense. And like you said, Louis, it's like, we ain't going to see the end of this. 
right, right now. Right now yeah. But if wow. we're all moving towards it, if we're right. actually moving towards reconciliation, community, th- we should not have a place where we're not feeling this tension. Right. And, I, and I think that that's what we all want. It's kind of like, well, let me avoid the tension. No, dive into right. it. Right. So. Well, so let me say this, and this will sound like it's the antithesis of what I'm saying. When I say reconciliation, I'm talking about reconciliation from a heart mm-hmm. standpoint. Mm-hmm. It does not mean that we can't continue continue to build Africa here, mm-hmm. okay. right? Like, so I'm a proponent of us building for us, buying yep. for us, yep. buying from us, you know, all of those good things. And that doesn't mean that I'm saying, forget everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just mm-hmm. saying that there's a need for us to come together and build our own communities yeah. up. There's a need for us to own the houses that we live in. Yeah. There's a need for black, there's the need for black real estate investors and real estate agents, et cetera, to own their own companies, mm-hmm. to own the, the right. to like my goal as a real estate investor is to own places like London Oaks. I want to own the places so, what, that you right, call the right, hood, right? Right. right? right. So that hmm. I can then be in charge of putting daycares on campus, it's redemption. putting yeah, schools absolutely. and education right. uh, incubators on Come campus, on. Yeah. and things of that nature. Uh, we have to do. I just read about 19 families who bought that spot in um, in Georgia somewhere, 90, oh, no, yeah. 91 mm-hmm. acres, right? Right. That they're trying to, to turn do. into yeah. a whole town. Like that is my goal. Like I want to see those right. types of things happen. And then I don't want to hear from white America, well, what about us? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we've been saying, what about us for 400 <laughs> yes, years? That's right. been the narrative. Right? Right. Like, you've given every other people group reparations except the people you stole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right? Now, here's the other thing. I'm also not a reparations guy. Okay. I will take them. Right. <laughs> right. I, don't right. Think I don't think we're going to I will take it. them. Right. Yeah. But what I'm not doing is begging for you to give me money. Right. right. When I've realized that we have the power, Chadwick Boseman just died. Mm-hmm. Um, he is he is the first. Now check this out: thirty nine years of living, he's the first black hero we've had. That's right. Mm-hmm. Right. Like understand, mm-hmm. there are children crying because they've never seen a black hero with his own movie, with, with his, his own, own movie, yep, right. his yep. own land. Right. Yep. Here it is. We've had Superman. We've had yep. Batman. Sitting around this. Right. Yep. We've had all these people. And they've been great, but but God gave us a black hero. Right. <laughs> right? In that. And or, or or what's his name Stanley uh, from the comic Stanley yep, yep. Uh, Stanley yep. he gave us a black hero in Africa mm-hmm. with the, with the most powerful resources Everything. in everybody the world needed them. Yeah, yeah everybody needs yeah. the vibranium That's right. from That's right. Wakanda That's right and what it remind and the reason that Chadwick Boseman is so mm-hmm. whatever and it's still on topic with the whole yeah. our community piece is because Chadwick Boseman. In Wakanda, as T'Challa reminded us that we were kings and queens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here yeah. we are seeing yeah. black strength yeah. right. and black unity on camera. Right. <laughs> right? Like, we are seeing what we can be, what we should be, what we were right. before we were brought to this country. And the, the hope that you were talking about earlier mm-hmm. is exemplified on this screen. Yeah. Right? And now it's like, man, we should be doing that. Right. So and I think that so this may be leaning on, on, on something, but I, I think that one of the things he he said in his uh, address to Howard, he was talking about this issue of purpose. Chad mm-hmm. Bozeman was talking about mm-hmm. purpose. What's interesting about purpose is we we all kind of have this feeling and want it, but purpose is connected to our impact on people. Like Absolutely. so, we, we don't we don't we don't ever think about somebody doing significant <clears throat> things and like oh the Wright brothers they they created an airplane but it was their impact on people and their ability to do things right, right? or we we think about Martin Luther King Jr. the the impact that he had wasn't that he was a great speaker it wasn't that he you know could organize but it was the fact that he had impact on people the same thing with Chad Bozeman like here it is this brother is experiencing cancer a debilitating mm-hmm. disease, and, for, and he's making mm-hmm. movies to impact people. Right. And, and I just think that that's kind of where sometimes it, it really gets under my skin, and, it, and that's where the divide is, is that we can't really begin to focus on our community because in some cases we've been so focused on ourselves. Here's what Martin Luther King Jr. said. I, I had to steal this from uh, Where Do We Go From Here. He says, we have to be careful that the path of black self-love and affirmation does not lead to self-defeating path isolation and despair Mm -hmm. and there's a sense that if we're not careful and this is probably just just throwing another thing in it if we're not careful in our pursuit of justice if we don't have mercy Mm -hmm. that oppressed people becomes now the oppressor right like I, I think it's important. Like so I, I want to solve that. So I'm glad you said that. That's where my balance. That's yeah. why I try to become unbalanced yeah. because sometimes we become so 
angry, so yeah. bothered yeah. that we become we be, we we end up being guilty of the very thing we're fighting. Yeah, we're right. Exactly. Right. right. Exactly. And that is where we need to make sure that there is a balance yep. and that we don't don't become that way, right? That's right. Even with our own community. In like if I, if you don't, you know, this is shifting, but it's not. <laughs> What Wakanda represented, mm-hmm. right, is us right. as a black That's people. It. Right, That's we it. are Wakanda. That's right, it. like we are Wakanda. And so when Chadwick Boseman in the in the ending scene of the mm-hmm. movie, mm-hmm. Right, he says, and I'm going to replace black people with the word Wakanda. Come right, on. he says black people will no longer watch from the shadows. We cannot. We must not. We will work to be an example of how we as brothers and sisters on this earth should treat each other. Now more than ever, the illusions of division threaten our very existence. We all know the truth. More connects us than separates us. Mm. But in times of crisis, the wise build bridges while the foolish build barriers. We must find a way to look after one another as if we were one single tribe. Right, right. we got all of these. Like, look at this political, and, and this is bringing me to the political climate. That's good. Right? That's good. Right, we're we're at this political climate where we have one evil or the other evil. That's right. Choose your right. poison. Right, yep. right. It's this idea that uh, I'm going to pick the best of two evils. Then you're still choosing evil. Mm-hmm. That's right. right. Right, and now we're being divided in our in our country over rhetoric. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Chariots and yeah. horses. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. As if this is where our trust lies in. Right. Right. Our trust is not in our trust is in God. Right. Yeah. Our trust is that God would, by way of Holy Spirit, turn hearts that will begin to diminish the racism in some of the people who are currently displaying it. Right. Which means that we have to continue to put pressure on it because pressure busts pipes. That's right. 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 And so the fights in the street, mm-hmm. right? The 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 need to organize. The need to own our own yeah, is not just to say, oh, I'm every black person, because, it's all in me, right, yeah. but it's to create a pressure that will bust the pipe of division in an effort to get us all reconciled, at least mm-hmm. in heart That's as right. humanity. That's right. right. Right? I don't have to live in your neighborhood. Right. In fact, I don't, I'm going to say something very whatever here. I think that <laughs> integration was probably one of the okay. worst no, things that happened to no, black people. Right. No way you going. Um, we traded in our corner stores for Woolworths. Right. Wow. I was wa- I was wow. watching um, the documentary on the the sit-ins, right? Mm. And it was some uh, some college students who sat in the Joker, got beat up at the Woolworths counter, the mm. city of the Woolworths counter, mm. right? Here we are begging white America to be black, mm. right? They sitting at the Woolworths counter. He says, and when we finally get an opportunity to sit at the Woolworths counter, I go in and I order a cup of coffee and a piece of apple pie. He said it was the it was mm-hmm. the worst coffee I ever had, and the apple pie was mediocre as best. Right. We're trading in our grandma's pie mm. and our grandma's sweet tea for white America's nasty coffee and bland <laughs> apple pie. Right. That's a good point, man, because <laughs> we are absolutely... and I We agree eat good you. already. I agree with oh, you, we man. can eat good in our... Oh, life, but we're not... We're like not, we're not, so we're, we're making. I don't have a listen. I will deal with white America where I have to deal with white America. My complaint is, I'm a like here's the thing, I'm a justice fighter, so it's Jesus and justice. So when there's a pressure coming, I'm gonna jump on it. Mm-hmm. But I want to make sure that we come up while I'm also fighting for the right. fighting against oppression that exists. Right. Let us begin to build houses and own land. Mm-hmm. Do what He says for us to do in Jeremiah. Right, like let's come up. All we quote in Jeremiah twenty nine is, "I know the plans." Right. You forget the whole yeah. part before that. That's right. Or he's saying, "Yo, live there, live with the like people. live Shalom. with the people, yep. show up, do what you do." Mm-hmm. Right, be great among them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we we would rather simply complain. I'm saying, let's complain, change, and come up. Absolutely, I think that that's you're you're right. Like it's it's a. It's a all. It's a both end. Like there's there's no way for us to just say let's just do this. Let's just do this. it's 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 all of it. And I think that what's interesting to me I is like I've got nothing against white America. I've got some right. great friends that are white. I've got like okay. we they're at my home. I mean, etc. My issue is when we as black people start to judge our blackness 
um, in relation to mm. other people's whiteness. Mm -hmm. Like that's where it becomes dangerous because that happens even in the black community where right. we see culture, we see colorism, right. right, happening in the community. So here it is, we we're saying, hey, we want to come up, but depending on how dark I am, right. I can't come up in my own community. Mm -hmm. right. it's, so it's 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 this real thing that we've got to figure out. I, I I mean, I think that Black Panther was such a huge move because representation matters. Like to to say that, oh, I actually can do that. We were having a conversation earlier about the gospel. And how we, we really, we easily throw, well, the gospel is the solution. Yep. But the gospel, mm. in, in our case, has felt really insignificant and incomplete, where the true gospel is comprehensive. It actually meets the needs of the people. And so we're looking at a gospel that has not met the needs of the people, a gospel that says that this brother, these brothers and sisters are actually struggling. Struggling. They've been oppressed. Let's bring them up. Right. So that now we can focus on some other stuff. Right. But let's bring them up too. Right. right. It's, I don't know. Well, the, the 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 different. What I mean, you all bring up very amazing, interesting points, and I just want to make sure. Well, throw out this idea that what we are saying is not that we want that we are trying to highlight and create a place of. Black supremacy. That's it. Uh, no, we are not. Just, we are after no. yep. highlighting black dignity, that's and that's the that's difference it. between. That's a, that's but isn't that, the isn't that what the gospel is? That's right, the, the gospel right. is about right. dig the dignity, dignity of creation. The Imago Dei. The Imago Dei. Like the Imago Dei. Like that's all. That's all we're saying. We're saying. But you gotta understand that we are. We are who we are because we believe the narrative that we're nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're now just coming to a place where we're like, no, that's not true. I am. I'm right. everything. Right, like, but you are too. Right. right, but I'm just not focused on your everything. Right, yeah. I'm focused yeah. on yeah. And, our and everything, that's, and, uh, and that's what the system mm -hmm. of white supremacy has created Absolutely. in us. It's, it's created narrative the, the narrative is created that one that I should aspire to be. That whiteness is the standard that we should all aspire right. to be. And from a white person's perspective, if I give you any inclination of any black dignity, then that may threaten my threat. yeah. my yeah. place of yeah. authority yeah. Yeah. and it's all rooted going back to what you're talking about racism being sin it's all rooted in sin and rooted in fear mm -hmm. and if I acknowledge your pain if I acknowledge your hurt if I acknowledge your dignity then some kind of way that's going to take away from who I am and that's why we will continue to have this system instead of us doing like the Bible says mm -hmm. do justice love, love mercy, mercy and walk humbly all that's of that it. requires action and it's going to require a laying down of preference. Mm -hmm. But we are, we have, this country has been founded from a system of hierarchy and saying, if I, if for some reason, me lending a hand to help you is going to take away from my power and who I am as a person. And that's not what we're saying. What we are saying as black people in America, acknowledge and respect my dignity and celebrate Yours as well, but don't right. diminish mine so that yours can shine brighter. Yep. Right, and then let me add that I, I'm very, I, I'm very cognizant of the fact that what we're fighting, what we're trying to fight, is a spiritual war. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it's right? all that this, yeah. that that people are usually pawns in spiritual strategy. Mm -hmm. Right, the people or humanity creation. Um, but we look at the decimation, des decimation of the black family. Uh, we right. still talking about. Uh, uh, police brutality because the decimation of the black family mm -hmm. causes more poverty, causes right. more right. crime, causes yep. more issues, et cetera. And I'm not saying that, listen, uh, what he was convicted of was absolutely horrible. I don't, I think it was messed up, et cetera. But make no mistake about it, the, the, the public humiliation and trial of Bill Cosby mm -hmm. was absolutely to diminish the value of the Huxley. Right. Come on, man. right? Like you gotta yeah. understand before the like like Wakanda, right? right. Before right. the Huxtables, there was no there black was family no that we they were yep. leaving the beaver. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right, you got two successful black people, kids yep. who are educated. Yep. They Solid. they yep. talking to their kids like our parents talk to right. us, and we're seeing for the first time on TV a hope right. that exists beyond mm -hmm. the community that I'm sitting in. Right, the Je the Jeffersons, cool. That's moving on up, but they didn't have kids. Right, right? Oh, we're looking at a black family. Right, right? and the moment that the actor, right. right, gets in trouble, you want to also diminish everything, you know. oh, everything that they everything that they've done. Right, Every, I mean, we weren't thinking about HBCUs before a different world. Right, I didn't even know they existed. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's very true. People 
thought Hillman was real. Right. Are they still do to this <laughs> yeah, day. Sure. Hillman is Hampton, people. <laughs> okay. That's what it is. Right. I think uh, a Jasmine guy was here, and somebody said, "How do you get into Hillman?" And she said, "There isn't a Hillman, but there is a Hampton." Yeah. Wow. Right. Wow. Like it's true. These images, right, uh, that exist, and now we've got images. That try to do the same thing, but still play into the narrative of, of white okay. America, mm-hmm. like blackish. Yeah. Okay. 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 Right. Uh, which I think that I think that Anthony Anderson and them are doing a great job for sure. of for sure of They're displaying what it means. Yeah, absolutely. Right. But but it's flying in the face of that. Right. It's the antithesis. We will not be what you want us to be. Right. This is who we are. Mm-hmm. It's right. in response. Yeah. In response yeah. to. Yeah. That's good. And I think that, that that stuff needs to happen. But there is there is absolutely an agenda. Right. Mm-hmm. There's absolutely an agenda to continue to keep God's people, because I would say that we are the aboriginals, we are the Hebrew Israelites, and we are the original Israelites, I'm talking about melanated people, um, that there is a, and has been since the beginning of time, a spiritual attack mm-hmm. on God's children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not man. saying that other people aren't God's children. Let <laughs> me make sure right. they're very clear. Right. Right. It's not what I'm saying, right. and I don't want to go into right. a deep theological sure. or whatever sure. here, but just saying that there is... There is an attack, or I believe, a spiritual attack uh, uh, under the principality of oppression on right. on black people, particularly black people in the Western in this country. In this sure. country. Well, right. Oh, for sure. And, 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 I, I, don't, no and I, I don't think anybody anybody <laughs> with any spiritual yeah, sense hard to deny could, could yeah. deny that. But we got white we got white brothers and sisters and black brothers and sisters right. who would. Oh, of right? course. Who would again go back to saying, yo, the gospel is the answer. You're right. And in the gospel is justice. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, and so... This is not the issue, but it, maybe it is. But there is a sense that the reason why, like you said, the, the reason we've been so complicit in this is because we've been almost, or we've been preaching a gospel for the last couple of decades that doesn't that, look like us. That doesn't look like us, mm-hmm. and only benefits a certain party. It right. only benefits if you do this or if you do that or if you look like this. And so I think that we've we've missed some things. And this is just my personal thing. I needed to share this before I forgot it. But as I think about uh, what Martin Luther King Jr. did, this is what is significant for me. I was diving into why we can't wait. So I've been on that tip right, for okay. a little bit. Mm-hmm. Here's what he says. He would have everybody sign this when they were doing the, uh, the all of the stuff in Birmingham. This Ten Commandments. Number one, meditate daily on the teachings and life of Jesus. Like that right Stop. there. Just, right, drop, mic. drop the mic right, right there because it's the sense that we've been talking about so many things, but here's Jesus in the midst of this ethical and ethnical and all of this racially diverse stuff, and he's able to deal with the tension. Right. Like even at his table. Was, mm-hmm. were folks who were from all different places, and he was able to deal with the tension. And I think what, what I'm saying, my heart's cry is, let's engage in the tension. Like, you don't have to be more supreme because you're a fisherman in this sense, or you're more supreme because you're a religious leader, or you're more supreme because you're a white person. I'm not talking about supremacy. Right. I'm talking about equality. Right. I'm just talking about, I, again, when we say black lives matter, I'm saying, comma, I, I, listen, I just want to matter just like you do. Right. Right. And I think about, and I get emotional about it because I think about my daughters right. who are growing up in a society where they've got to prove themselves over and over and over. I've got to, the, the sad thing with, with me, guys, is that the fact that we even have to have this conversation. Right. And that, it's, it's for, and by and large, I've got to prove to people that, first of all, we know what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Second of all, I've got to prove to you that the thing exists. It's frustrating. Right. It is. It's beyond so, frustrating. So I think, I, I'm sorry. No, I, no. I think that Black Lives Matter comma speaks to what we were talking about earlier as it relates to us having to May appease okay. Okay. the offense okay. of, the, of no Black Lives Matter. Period. I got you. I got you. Right? Yeah. This isn't about you. Mm. Like when I was at Liberty, who stu- stu- <laughs> um, <laughs> right <Uh-oh>. <laughs> <laughs> studying uh, um, human counseling. Mm. One of our books, one of the books that I was reading, I can't remember who the author is, but it was talking about uh, 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 communication skills and there being two roles in those communicate in the, in the communicate. In communication, the talker and the listener. That's right. So the receiver. The, yep. the talker is the one who owns the problem. Okay. So the listener's only job is to hear the problem. The problem with white America, those who don't understand, is that you're trying to talk. You're trying to own a problem that's not yours. Mm. Right? So you're trying to tell me how to deal with my problem, and you're not listening to the problem at all. That's right. 
right? If you're if you're thinking about what your response is gonna be while I'm talking, then you're not listening to right. me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. many times that's what's happening, right? They're not playing the role of the part. So I said that to say this: that when I add a comma, I've taken in I've I've taken into consideration of the listener before we started the conversation, right? Right? No, Black Lives Matter. Period. Okay. Mm. Let's talk. That is the subject matter. Mm. So, it's the topic sentence. So let's talk about that. Mm. So that's, that, that's exactly let's where I'm going with Black Black Lives Matter. Um, what is? It's so many questions I have for it. But let's just talk about it and why we're talking about movements and yeah. and action steps and things of that nature. Why is Black Lives Matter such a place of controversy? And I'll. While, while I'm at, while I'm giving you that, the chew on to come up with your answers for that oh, the response yeah, yeah. to that. Why I'm, is it, I'm why is chopping it a, a bit. Right, right. Why is it such a place <laughs> of controversy? Um, just piggybacking on the last thing you said, I had a conversation with um, with a with one of a spiritual leader in my life that is white, and we were uh, talking about um, Colin Kaepernick, this 2016, about the protesting and how he you're protesting police injustice. The very things that that the NFL has now said we should have listened to you and we're sorry that we didn't listen to you. Which does he have a job? But he still ain't worked. I mean, Um, he don't need one. You know, that's true. That's true. So, so, so he was the point of we was talking about how it could have been done another way, and I had to tell him, you as the oppressor can never tell the oppressed person how to protest their oppression. Mm. You don't have that That's right. Yeah. You can't do that. I understand you may not agree with it, but you have to listen and not try to come up with a response to what I'm saying. I need you to sh- to show some concern and not rebut how I protest my oppression. Wow. You, as the oppressor, you can't tell me how to wow. protest my oppression. You may not agree with it. Mm-hmm. You don't think it's right, and it's another way to do it, but you don't have that ability to tell me how to do that. So we talk about Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. Why is that such a controversial thing? Because I mean, we everybody has their take on what Black Lives Matter, the statement versus the movement, mm-hmm. and why and can't the why so, in the organization? So that's exactly um, where I was about. Why to go. I can't I, uh, the Black Lives Matter the statement? Uh, I can get behind that, but I can't be a supporter of Black Lives Matter the movement and how those things intersect and how I if I say Black Lives Matter, then that must mean that I support the yes, movement yes, and that yeah, I agree yeah. with all of their points. Why is it such a controversial place? So I'm very careful to be honest with people who follow me or who I have influence mm-hmm. uh, uh, with. Um, I am one of those ones who who will adamantly say I support Black Lives Matter as a statement, yeah. um, and not as an organization. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I'm good with that. I'm yeah. fine with that. There are some things that. Because I'm very, very careful not to kill us on mm-hmm. camera or right. in public, yeah, um, I just say research and go to the about section and on the blacklivesmatter.com. Right. And I got it right and, here. And you you see it? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, so he's ready right. to go yeah. there. <laughs> so listen. <laughs> so I mean, if you go there, I'm going to go there with you. Right. But, right. but uh, So I, I support Black Lives Matter statement because it's true. Black lives do matter. Mm-hmm. And uh, the statement should be black, sh- black lives should matter. Mm-hmm. Right, because the truth, and that's what we're saying. Right. In essence, we're saying black lives should matter because they don't currently matter to you. Mm-hmm. Right, um, and so the statement I'm good with. I will say it 152 times, but uh, my belief system, yeah. um, my my uh, my ethical uh, uh, my ethical bent yeah. won't allow me to. I don't really say black lives matter a lot, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Because I don't I don't want to be associated with the 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 brand mm-hmm. right? and why is that? I don't even have a Black Lives Matter shirt. Okay, um, because the brand the brand I believe, based on my reading the about okay. section, yeah. is that the agenda is to extract the black man that you're fighting for right. in the first place. Okay. I want you, us to go back to the beginning of the Black Lives Matter movement. It started at the Trayvon Martin Trayvon, yeah. Trayvon Martin yeah, right. uh, time. Who started that statement? Like, we don't even know. Right? Well, we do know. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we do know there were a group of people who are in a particular mm. other group right. um, who who use it. Now, let me say this. I do not not believe that they don't believe Black Lives Matter. Sure. I just believe that they use this as for a separate agenda. For a separate agenda. That makes sense. Um, and, Lord, I, oh, man. 
Yeah. This is going to be like... Hey, we out here now. Yeah, we, we out, out here. We in the deep uh, yeah. There's an LGBTQ agenda behind Black Lives Matter, mm-hmm. the organization. Um, and here's the crazy part. The LGBTQ community, let me say this very clearly. Whether I agree with your lifestyle or not does not change the fact that I love your yeah, humanity. Human. Yep. No I love your humanity. No, I love who you like are. Yep. We can drink coffee, eat yep. pizza, yep. etc. No different than I don't than I disagree with somebody who's cheating on his wife. Right. Yep. right? It is what it is. Yep. Like I love you. Mm-hmm. Very let me make that very yep. clear. Um, because you know, somebody like you mess with you mess with them. Them and me too, or you're done, done, right? right? Like so, uh, and the thing is, I don't like walking on eggshells, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't support it because of the LGBTQ agenda behind it. Um, I mean, it literally extracts the black man yeah, from sure. the funeral. Sure. I mean, from the funeral, <laughs> extracts the black man from the family, mm-hmm. changes the nuclear structure yeah. of it, and to me, that just shows the brokenness. And the hopelessness that is entered into the hearts of women in our community, yeah. right? Which ends up taking us to a whole nother whole place, whole nother place. Yep. where it, you end up in the "I'm every woman in all of me, I don't need a man," mm-hmm. right? So all of this, yep. and here is the thing: it all originated in the garden. Mm. Lucifer, Satan's intent was to separate Eve and Adam from the rip, mm. right? It was to jack up the family of God yeah. in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And that is still his agenda. Like, nothing's changed. It's still his agenda. His agenda is to break up the family of God and use whatever he can to break up the family of God. So, long story short, Black Lives Matter as a movement, eh -eh, got nothing for it. I won't buy a Black Lives Matter t-shirt. But I do support it as it relates to a statement. I will hashtag it. That's marketing, though. I know that if you click on this joint, you get to our stuff will come up in the feed. Right? Mm -hmm. So... That is where I am on the Black Lives Matter thing. I also want to make very, very clear. I have white friends um, who uh, who have journeyed with me through my tension, who call and check up on me, yep. who are both public Likewise. and private. Likewise. Um, so yep. I, when I speak to yep. when I speak to white America, I say things like that. I'm not. Listen, if you bark, you're a hurt dog. Okay. Right. So if it doesn't apply to you, there's no need to bark. Shake That's your good. hand and black. Mm, That's good. I'm good. <laughs> Right, like that's not me. Like there's certain things I see on Facebook that could be me, but I know it's not me. So I'm like, oh man, whoever mm-hmm. they talking about, that's crazy. Right, right. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even get bothered. And then somebody say, oh, they was talking about you. I'm like, really? Right. And they got that wrong, dog. Right. Like that ain't me at all. So anyway, yeah, so good. Black Lives Matter statement, I'm good with Black Lives Matter movement agenda. Eh, eh. Okay. I feel, I feel like I'm on, I'm on the same page. Yeah. I, I think that the statement itself. I mean, I've even, I, I've hashtag it, and then I always, I always pause a little bit before yeah. I, because. I'm like, eh. I even went to a protest one, and I once, and I had a, I had a sign, and I even, I couldn't put Black Lives Matter. I put BLM because I believe in the statement 100. Okay. percent Black Lives Matter, absolutely, and I thank you for that. The period. I, I the, the, yes, absolutely, I believe in that. I think the organization and, and, and the movement there is a there is this subtle agenda that I don't. I don't it ain't agree. subtle. It, it's blatant. Because so, I think some of us are. It's like, hidden. Oh, no, that's because black saying. people hidden in general don't. Read. Right. So yeah. how do we knowing that? Well, no, that, let me stop. I'm sorry. Let me say that. They bet on black people not reading. Right. Because we do read. Well, that's a marketing that's, scheme just across the, the right, board. Right. But yes, right. absolutely. So knowing that, knowing that we we all agree on it, what you said, I agree with all of that totally. Um, knowing that we have the statement versus the movement, how do we navigate that tension? How do we still... How do we still... Um, Affirm Black lives yeah. and and uh, demand that Black lives be acknowledged and dignified and treated fairly, without um, with without joining the agenda of the movement or without our our uh, good being evil spoken of, like or 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 do we even attempt to do that? Yeah, I yeah. think it's I think it's too much to slice through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. If I throw a protest tomorrow, BLM is gonna show up, yeah, and, right. I'm, and, I'm a, yep. and I'm gonna welcome yep. them. I'm gonna welcome them there. Um, here's what I know: that most of the people holding up BLM signs don't have any clue about the organization. So what's going on? Right. Yes. Okay. Um, it's a it's a it's a hashtag for them. That's okay. um, it's a so, hashtag. and and the statement is true, right? Mm-hmm. So, I don't I I don't fight, but you'll never hear me say a Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. protest, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'm 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 cool with the one uh, with the guy who runs but BLM 757. Okay. Right. But again, right. you brand it on your, you brand it yourself. Right. That's right. I mean, we've had conversations before that if it was our joint, I say don't brand it BLM 757. Right. I mean, right. BLM 757. Because again, I ain't with it. When we was at the Confederate Monument, somebody put a big BLM sign on the front okay. of the joint. I'll be honest with you, I was like, oh. that ain't what we doing, right? But I have to remind myself that the statement is true. Right. I think to, to that same point, mm-hmm. I think one of the ways uh, that I'm thinking of of how we not so much reconcile, but it's to really begin to dig and realize, like, why are people saying it? And, and the reason that we're saying it is that this is, you know, to use the term, this is a lament. Th- this it is, is. This is it us. Is. This is us crying right. out right. and saying, like, man, we've been we've been oppressed for how many years now? And that should be the focus, yeah. not so much. Yeah. Not not that that should be the focus. Without trying to diminish that right. by using the separate agenda of the movement, right. and that's unfortunately that's the that's where we are is having to make the statement be the focus without yep. Yep. without allowing the the disagreement with the movement yep. to have the statement yep. be it be ignored, right. and that's yep. that's the tension that we have. But I think that we do a good job of doing it as long as we make the we focus on the main thing main being thing, the main, main thing. thing. Absolutely right. And so the thing is, like the agenda is so whatever. I think I started seeing it start coming out black black trans right. Mm-hmm. right. So it's, and I'm sitting here like, so is a black trans life not a black life? Not a black life exactly. Which when shows you, you right. the agenda. Why do you have to? Mm-hmm. Why do you have why to say black have trans? Why do you have to right. highlight it? Matter right. no black lives matter now. That is an LGBTQ issue, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Your if if there are, because oh, yep. here's the thing, if if somebody is coming at you sideways or or threatening harm towards you or harming right. the trans community, first of all, I absolutely condemn that because again, you a mago de, a mago de, that's a main yeah. image like yeah. a cigar, yeah. even if you change that image, absolutely. right, right, physically. But if somebody's doing that to you, like that's horrible. We should seek justice for that person as right. well. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's the truth of the matter: that's an LGBTQ. Issue. They are not attacking you because you're black and trans, mm-hmm. right? They have an issue with something else, right? And to group us all That's in, point, it's the same thing with with black women in our country who have joined the women's suffrage movement, a movement that was never meant for you in the first place, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like I, I think, like now we've got these, the, all of these things start spewing out from all of this, and we're still talking about the things that happen in our community, right? right? right. All these things start spewing out from that, and now we've got people upset and and black women saying, you know, why is the black man doing this and not letting us be great, et cetera. And I'm like, yo, would you like to go back to the 40s and the 50s and the 60s when the black family had two working people in the home? Mm-hmm. Right when the man would go to the uh, to the to the to the warehouse, and the woman would go and work in somebody's house, right? Like, and they would come to the table with this one pot of money. Do you want to talk about how black men and black women have walked alongside that somebody else gave you that agenda? Mm-hmm. Right, and again, all to di- all to destroy the black family. Right. And now you're joining movements with other people. Like when they did their women's march in uh, the women's march in DC, DC, there were black women who said white women were pushing them out of the way to get other white women on the trains. Wow. It wasn't about you, sister. Right. <laughs> it wasn't about, it was you, never about you. Right. right? You were being used to, because here's the deal mm-hmm. you were being used to build the numbers because oh, pressure man. busts That's pipes. Nobody cares about 40 people out there on the lawn and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, they even tried to diminish the march in Washington. Yesterday. Right, there was right. a picture that went up initially right. that said 1963, and it was flooded. Yeah, right. no. And then somebody took a picture of the beginning of the march right. where it was just a little no, bit, that's right. and said 1963, 2020. Right, and then you see the real picture right. that looks just like 1963, right. because you want to diminish the power. COINTELPRO existed to diminish the power of the black. Of the black black man, right? Leader, yeah. Like th- this is they've killed all of our heroes. Mm. Dr. King, mm. Mega Evers, mm. Malcolm X, Fred Hampton, right. Mm. right? They put a drug needle in Huey Newton's arm. Yeah. Mm. Like I mean, like they they dropped crack in 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 the Bronx. Like right. th- all of these things that did not exist, and then start a war on crime, which really meant war, war on, on black, black people. people. That's true. 
Yeah. All of these things. And here's the thing. The black, the black church stopped talking once they killed the black leader. Mm-hmm. So, all uh, right, man. Some so would talk, ago. like Jeremiah Wright, Ooh. hey, they was on it, mm-hmm. right? Jeremiah Wright's are on it. Jamal Bryant's have been on it, mm-hmm. right? Like these, mm-hmm. there have been pastors in Tisby, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. People have been on it, right? But we're in white circles mm-hmm. who look at us like we're stupid. Yeah. But I don't know how. You, here's a message to white America. You want to help offend your political connects. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to sacrifice relationships for what's true. Because we have to do it. We, we, we've yeah. already done it. We've already we do done it. We've been we doing it. Right. Like, we've there's been no choice. Right. I had a friend that this is, this is really significant for me. We had a friend that was saying, hey, I don't want my kids to be exposed to this wow. stuff. And I don't want to say this. And my wife, her response was, we don't have a choice. Right. Like, I, it's, my, my daughters are asking questions at four, or oh, sorry, eight, six, and four. They're asking questions. Well, how come it seems like, my daughter, eight-year-old, how come it seems like white people are more important? Mm-hmm. How, how come when I look at how come when I look at these dolls she says to me right. how come they, they don't look like anyone else I mean it's the greatest thing ever and I'll say this it's the greatest thing ever now that she's reading a book about Michelle Obama mm-hmm. and she's got so much dignity right. she's got so right. much like how, she's wearing her hair out now and before right. she wouldn't do that right. and when you ask her like what's going on with your hair well this is my natural hair like it's right. so it's there is this sense man like I don't even know how I got there but it, it's a sense that we we've got to we just, I don't know, man. There is a lament that's happening, and we need to allow it to happen. We need to, I think that sometimes we are so quick to get to the solution mm-hmm. that we are not spending time in the tension. Right. Yeah. Right. right. And we have to probably navigate the tension. Yeah. Right. So when we're in rallies and we have to, we have opposers come to those mm-hmm. rallies. Like, I remember the last rally, our sister was so upset with me because of how I was responding to somebody who was in opposition to us. And I said to her, I said, listen, first of all, there's already a narrative that big black men are angry. Mm-hmm. I'm very cognizant mm-hmm. of that. You see all these cameras around here? They it's are crazy. waiting to expose me as the big black angry right. man. Yep. And so I'm going to have this conversation with this white man who's yelling like he lost his mind yep. in a very articulated, yep. educated yep. way. Yep. And then ask him questions that put him on the spot. Yep. Right, to, so, to, so that we can show that he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> right. But if you keep doing this, right, it's making the whole narrative look bad. We have to be able to disagree agreeably. Mm-hmm. Right, I can disagree with you and not cuss you out. That's right. Right. That's like right. I could just, hey man, what you're saying is absolutely wrong. Right. It's ignorant. You need to go do some more study, <laughs> and then let's come back and talk to it. Also, you and then I'll just cut the conversation. Also, you don't you don't want to listen. You don't want to reconcile. There's no need for us to have this mm-hmm. conversation. Mm-hmm. No justice, no peace, and I'm going back to the rally. Like yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just <laughs> conversation dead and over over with. We just have to be very very cognizant mm-hmm. of what we're doing, how we're doing it, and very strategic. Not to be sucked into the That's angry good. black man narrative. That again, remember, every black man out here to somebody to somebody looks like the dude from Birth of a Nation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Scared. And and like we're teaching our kids about what's going on, somebody's teaching their kids that we are wrong. Right. I make my children at a certain age watch Mississippi Burning, mm-hmm. Rosewood. Mm-hmm. They've seen everything, mm-hmm. right? Right. Um, because I want you to be cognizant of the America that you live in. That's right. Mm. Not, That's right. We don't have a choice. Right? Like the not the America that you live in, mm-hmm. but the not the America that you see. I'm sorry, right. the America right. that you live in. Right. But let me show you where you've come from. Let me show you what your grand, right. your grandma and your grandfather and right. your great grandfather. Mm-hmm. Let me show you what they've gone through, right. right, and what they've had to live through and navigate through. Mm-hmm. Because if we don't teach our kids, they're not going to teach our kids. It's right. a struggle, though. I think as you bring up that point, like you even said it, and and the idea that, and I know again we're on, I'm off topic, but to think through that in a conversation. You've got to actually be navigating multiple worlds at one time. Yep. So, like you, you are saying, "Hey, I'm cognizant that there's a camera on me, and I, and I'm also recognizing that I'm talking to a white man who may uh, think that I'm an aggressor, but I've also know that I'm leading these people here. And I, and I, maybe I'm not the interviewer, but I, right. how do we navigate that tension, like on a on a daily basis? Like that's a real thing. Make it less difficult. Mm-hmm. I'm navigating one world. Mm. Right? I'm navigating yeah. one world, my black world. Wow. These are just people on my chessboard. Mm. Right? I'm the king. Mm. Right? These people are working for the whatever agenda that we have going on. Mm. So if you come over here and you're opposing what's going on, you don't change my world. I just have to address you from my world. 
right? And so I don't, I am, I'm because I'm cognizant of what I have to do to live in my world. Right. So all that you, all that you mentioned is what I have to do to live in my world. Right. But I'm not entering into your world because you got the cameras on. I understand how you see me. Right. I'm not entering into your world because you're trying to start an argument with me. I understand how you see me. Right. right? I'm not entering into your world because um, you see, uh, uh, because you say that we're angry black men. I understand that that's how you see me. Right, so my my consciousness is that I'm going to be who I am, and I don't have to be what you say because what you say was a lie anyway. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. I'm not giving any energy to who you think I am. I'm just going to be who I am, mm. and I think that again, I, I navigate in a space where I'm not going to ask white people for permission to be black. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be who I am. Right. If you're offended by that, then may the Lord touch your heart. Because there's nothing I can do. I cannot make you like me. Right. And I won't. Unless I'm doing something wrong to you. Yeah. Right? If I know that I'm loving you, if I know that I'm... Uh, black people are some of the most forgiving people in the world. Mm. Right? We will... You will spit in our face. We will be angry about it. You will do something like paint Black Lives Matter down Pennsylvania Avenue and then we will forgive you. Mm-hmm. Thank you for pay, painting Black Lives Matter down the middle of the aisle. Like that just changed something. Right. Right, we'll forgive you and we'll come back out here and we'll be quiet. Here's the problem. Y'all done went reckless. Mm-hmm. You started killing people back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Right. Right. Like, I mean, you realize that in a three year span, we saw three black men killed on camera. I mean, in a, on a, in a year and a half span, 18 yeah, months, yeah. we saw three black men killed on camera. Right. We saw Eric Gardner die. Right. We saw the blood. I, I will never get the image of the blood filling. At Alton Sterling's shirt right. when he gets shot outside the corner store. Mm-hmm. We watched Philando Castell lose his last breath on camera with a broken arm from a bullet. Like we watched this on camera. Right. I don't have to enter into your world. Yeah. Right. This is who I am. This is my experience. This is what mm-hmm. I'm dealing with. Mm-hmm. You have an obligation to me. Right. I don't have an obligation to you. And that's how I navigate in these moments. Now I have an obligation to love you. Right? right? I have an obligation to forgive you where God can give me the grace to do so. Right? right? I have an obligation to love, uh, 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 do justice, love, uh, mercy, love mercy. Yeah. Right. I have all of these obligations. And I have an obligation to seek the Holy Spirit when I have no more cheeks to turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Right? But I do not have an obligation to pander to your willful ignorance and sin. Right. We, we, all of the points that we've made that we've made today have been so eye-opening and phenomenal. It's, but especially this last one, mm. we are in a place where we are. Uh, I'm s- steal this from Tyler Burns and uh, Jamar Tizen from Pastor Mike, where we are at a place where Black people, especially in uh, white Christian spaces, we are no longer in a place where we are willing to negotiate our dignity. Wow, we have yeah. we have That's done we have, we have we have we have done that point. forever. And we are always mm, asked to point. do that. We're always asked yeah. to to to, uh, well, just, to to just see it out, just, right? To to be in front of the opposition and stay level headed, but also have the radical tension in your in this side, mm. having to say you mm. need to just go off. We've all we live in that space, yeah. but we are at a place where okay, we are no longer negotiating mm. our dignity. I don't have to prove my blackness to you. I don't have to prove that these instances of police brutality are true because I live it. I don't have to prove these things and I'm we're no longer in a place of trying to live a place, live in a place yeah. from live in that type of place, live from, from that place. You know, um so thank you for all of that. We we could again go on for another two hours. But you know my you know my dad my dad was a preacher and he would say I'm 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 not out of message but I'm out of time. <laughs> um, and and that's that's where we are now. We are n- certainly not out of message, <laughs> out of but we are out of time. Um, so hopefully this conversation has has sparked interest in those who are watching mm. and has encouraged us yeah. sitting here um, being affirmed, affirming each other's causes, affirming each other's manhood, affirming each other's beliefs in what we in what we believe that we have been called to do right. by God. Of course, the Great Commission... Um, to love neighbor as ourself, but also we've been given the task to do justice, to love, love mercy, 
and walk oh, humbly. And I believe, and I celebrate you guys for doing that in your collective places of, of influence. Um, just know that me, I appreciate the work that you do, James and Louis. I appreciate the work that you all do, that, that you do. Um, and knowing that it's not um, for not, we, we may not see the finish line, but we are all t collectively moving mm -hmm. this thing forward in the way that we do it. And I think that that's a big, a major takeaway from, from the day. We had so much that we could have gotten to, uh, possible solutions that we could have. But, of course, with our community and with us talking, we will always see that. Um, but I'm going to give you all, I'm, I'll, I'll close it out, out at the end, but in, thir in 60, 60 seconds or less, just give us a, a final statement, some type of encouragement, what you would like to see happen, what could it possibly be? I know asking preachers to do that mm. in 60 seconds is going to be hard work, but I got faith in you. Louis, <laughs> you, you, you first. Um, I think that, I don't know, six, I don't know oh, yeah. 10 seconds right now. <coughs> um, it's very, I, I got one word or one statement to you, and it's been ringing in my heart since this PJ Moore album came out. Yeah, yeah. Don't let go. Don't, don't let go. Come on. Yeah. Uh, don't let go. We've gone through a lot. We've, we've suffered a lot. We've experienced a lot. We get glimpses of hope, and then we get that hope shattered by glimpses of, I mean, by reality that's in our face. Yeah. The only thing that I could say to us is, don't let go. Eternity is coming. Yeah. And um, and we just hope to get some glimpses of heaven yeah, man, until eternity we? meets us at the end. And so that is all I gotta say. Don't let go. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yo. That's a great point, man. I, I just to echo that is realizing that we're. We're in a marathon versus a sprint. Yeah, um, I say that this, all the time. Is, this is this is not something that goes away tomorrow, and we can't give the same energy that we give in a marathon to the same energy we would give in a sprint. Yeah. So yeah. it's like it's just it's knowing where to channel my energy, and I love that. Don't let go. That, that it's worth it. It's it's and it's. I think the idea of just loving people, just mm -hmm. like dive into that. If there's anything else, Paul says these three things remain: faith, hope, and love. Mm -hmm. And the greatest of these. The yeah. greatest of these. So, you know, we're in a space where we all have a common goal. We may do it differently. We may have different approaches, but the goal is still the same. And that's what we're celebrating today. So, again, man, thank you all so much for thank you. lending your time and your treasure. Um, the things that you all have, have lended to this conversation are not things that you just looked up on the Internet, but they've been life experiences. Yeah. And I think those are the ones that are the most, the most impactful. Um, so with that... Um, James, pray us out, man. And then yeah. and this this is gonna be it. This is amazing, amazing conversation. Stuff we can chew on for years. Amen. 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 Well, Lord, thank you for um, this opportunity to sit with our brothers, Lord, and the sisters that are watching, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity to sit with family, um, Lord. We just continue to ask that your kingdom uh, in heaven would invade our earth, God. That you would begin to see healing and, and hope here in our city, um, here in the 757, um, God, that we would not lose hope, that we would not lose faith. Um, God, we know that you're real, and we know that you're moving, yeah. so we trust you, um, and we need you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. amen.